Hey everyone, welcome back to Polycosm. We got a design principles episode today on creating 3D anatomy reference for a stylized character design. We'll be working with DAS 3D and Blender to create a reference model with exaggerated and stylized proportions, while maintaining a believable anatomy. Once we lock that down, we'll set some lights to get some lighting reference as well. Then, we'll jump into Photoshop to sketch and finalize our design. Let's get started. So, like I mentioned before, we'll be starting out in DAS 3D. For this part, I had to use Christina's PC because apparently the current version of DAS at the time of recording this was not compatible with the latest Mac OS, so if any of you are Mac users, bear that in mind. I'm going to create a basic pose reference here with slight adjustments to the anatomy. Yeah, okay, maybe not quite like that. I want to create a character with elongated limbs and an overall lean body type. Alright, let's bring in our model into Blender and keep modifying it further. Christina made a few videos in the past that covers importing models from DAS to Blender, so if you have any questions regarding that part of the workflow, make sure you check those out. To modify his limbs, just select the bone in pose mode and scale it along the Y axis. Make sure the scale orientation is set to local. As reference, I've been looking at the body types of people who are incredibly tall and lean. There are certain rare genetic conditions that can cause these unusual proportions. For example, Javier Botet, a Spanish actor who has such a genetic condition, uses his unique physique to portray various creatures in movies. Not every human being fits the typical Andrew Loomis proportions. Human anatomy can vary in size and proportion very drastically. When you want to push the proportions of your characters, you can still find reference in the real world to study and be inspired from. I'm going to bring in an axe model from Sketchfab for this guy to hold. I won't be using the actual design of the axe in the end, this is just a placeholder to help me with the perspective. As I adjust the proportions, I'm going to have to keep adjusting his pose as well. This back and forth is going to go on for some time until I get a result that I'm happy with. Right, as we start to get some lighting going, I realized we'll have to keep our model decent so as not to upset the keepers of morality that preside over YouTube. So we gave him a G-string to wear. Yeah, I think that looks good. Shame we'll have to cover it all up with clothing and armor later on. If you are wondering about the node setup and why it looks like that, check out Curtis Holt's Blender startup file on his Gumroad. I mean, it's free, so you got nothing to lose. I'm going for a typical two light source setup here, a main light and a rim light. My main light is going to be a cool blue, and for the rim light, I'm going something yellow-orangey. If you look at a color wheel, you'll see that the colors I picked are pretty much on the opposite parts of it. This means they are complementary colors, meaning they create the most color contrast next to one another. Using complementary colors is a great way to create appealing and interesting lighting schemes. Let's set up a camera and find a good angle. When you're ready, just render your image out and head over to Photoshop. I have previously talked about how I don't like drawing over 3D models and why, so I'm not going to go over it again here, but feel free to check those videos out after this if you want to listen to me babble on about it. I'll start out by blocking in a basic figure that first focuses on the gesture. Then I can sketch in the main volumes such as the ribcage and pelvis. I block in the arms and legs once I'm happy with the previous stages. At this point, nothing is final. This is all subject to change later on. I will keep adjusting the proportions as I keep working, but for now, I feel like I have a good base, so I set this layer to multiply, and then on a new layer below, I roughly sketch in the silhouette. We have a solid base with a believable anatomy, so focusing on the silhouette becomes a little easier. I don't want to spend a lot of time at this stage, once I have something interesting, I will start sketching on top to define my smaller shapes. Now that I have most of the design work done, I'll slow down and take my time to refine certain areas. For example, I was struggling with the folds here over his left elbow, 
so I just went ahead and asked Christina to pose for me with a blanket over her arm. I mean, she doesn't really have anything better to do, so she might as well just help me out. Then, when I was struggling with his left hand, I just took a quick reference picture of my own hand. With all these 3D resources, cameras on our phone or webcams, it is incredibly easy to create our own references. Sometimes this is far easier and faster than hoping Google Images search will gift you with the perfect reference. The rough sketch is done and now it's time to clean all this up. As usual, I colorize this layer then start inking over it on a new layer. Make sure you have everything resolved in your sketch before you start on this stage. The more time you spend drawing and resolving any kind of issues you might have run into, the less time you'll have to waste later on fixing mistakes. Now I'm going to take my time and focus on the actual draftsmanship part. This stage is all about your decision making. Think about what to draw, what to imply and what to leave out of the drawing. Once the clean line art is done, I block in my flat colors. I prefer to use a limited color palette at this stage, as I find this to be a good method to create a coherent design. I'm keeping my flats in mid to dark values. Then, I create a solid color layer set to hard light blending mode to paint in my lights. Feel free to adjust the opacity and fill settings for this layer to get the desired effect. You can use a different blending mode as well, this is just what I chose to go with in this case. I am constantly referring to the 3D reference when I am painting my lights here. I add another solid color layer set to linear dutch this time for the rim light. These two give me a base to work with and on top of that I'll be using a multiply layer for deeper shadows and add further specular highlights with color dutch. You can keep painting more or keep it simple from this point on. This really depends on the final look you'll be going for. At the end, I think about the presentation of the character, then add some noise on top for visual interest. And here's the final image. It's quite a step up from the base 3D reference, don't you think? Even though we push the proportions quite a bit, I think in the end he still retains that believability in his anatomy. Having good references really help with that, but remember that you should still be studying real life anatomy and building your understanding of it as well. That brings us to the end of this episode. Thanks for watching everyone and be sure to let us know if you have any questions. Take care and see you all in the next video.